Hey everybody, this is Cryptode. Welcome to another YouTube video. This time, switching it up from Top Shot, I'm going to be focusing on another NFT project that I've been into for a while. That's called CryptoPunks. Now, I'm not really going to get too much into the beginnings and the specifics of CryptoPunks. This video is going to be more focused towards um, the intermediate to advanced NFT buyer collector user. I'm going to give some information about um, the guys who made it. But it, there's a lot of resources out there if you want to learn more about the specifics and the origins. But at a high level, these are the first NFTs. And these existed before ERC-721 standard even existed. So these are non-fungible ERC-20s. They're non-divisible ERC-20s that the founders basically made themselves. And this set the standard for on the NFT moving forward. And these are also, as of now, the first on-chain art pieces on Ethereum. So uh, what I want to talk about in this video, like I said, just um, a little bit on, on Larva Labs, which is a company by the, the two guys who made CryptoPunks. Um, get deep into the metrics that, you can, uh, that are provided on the site, user base, um, some of the traits of each of the CryptoPunks get into um, the marketplace, of course, look at the top sales and why they commanded the value that they did. Um, and you know some tips for newcomers and just kind of what's been going on. Th things are really started popping off once again this week, especially this morning, which really prompted me to finally go ahead and make a video about this. So starting off with Larva Labs, they were founded by two guys named Matt and John. And they were two very early uh, mobile developers. Like we're talking way before smartphones, sidekicks, earlier than earlier than that. And they basically were able to leverage having that early skill set into lucrative jobs and contracts with some of the biggest companies in the world as they all started to adopt mobile, Google, Microsoft, and this allowed them to retire from the workforce early and be able to focus on other professional and experimental passion projects such as CryptoPunks. And they, they make not only blockchain related projects, there's all, they make a lot of mobile apps, they have a lot of games. There's like separate communities that you know people pop into Discord are talking about mobile games and they don't even know that there's a whole blockchain component to you know, things that Matt and John work on. And that has their own following as well. So one thing that I, I think is not uh, spoken about within the community, which I like, appreciate a lot compared to some of the other Project, especially very timely when you, with what's going on with DeFi and Sushi Swap, is that these guys were retired and wealthy and and you know set had a great life before CryptoPunks, before these were worth anything. So you'll never expect them to kind of be like, oh my god, I need I need to sell all these CryptoPunks that I have for X thousands of dollars because I need money. They are not like that at all. These are very nice guys. They're not extremely active, but they are in the Discord. They run the Twitter bot and Discord bots that, that tweets out and messages every time there's a sale or bid or an offer. So you tag them, the bot's broken, they'll pop in, um, but they're around. But I, I find it very valuable that they, with their lives would be exactly the same with or without CryptoPunks um, becoming a thing. So because you know, there's 10,000 unique punks and as a creators, they gave themselves 10% of the supply. So they started with um, 1,000 punks, and they hold on to these very tightly. As of right now, I'll look at this after, they have, I believe, 984 um, punks in their wallet. They're obviously the top wallet holder of punks. And they, in the beginning, you know, when the project first started, so this started in June 2017, right when the ICO boom was taking off, Ethereum was taking off. Um, they sold a couple, they let, let a couple go for cheap, you know, just, you know, getting the market going or whatever. But now if you want to get some of their punks, you need to at least offer two to three times the market value. They hold these very, very dearly as they should, as everybody should, in my opinion. So now I just want to get into, um, some of the metrics, as I mentioned. So... One thing they have available on the site, so you have to go to larvalabs.com slash CryptoPunks to buy and sell, to access all of the information. Just because, as I mentioned, it's an ERC-20. It's a very old, very unique smart contract 
that is not easy to implement into marketplaces such as OpenSea and other marketplace platforms like that. So everything at, is through this site, but as of this morning, it changed a little bit. So first, just looking at the top owners. So one very valuable metric that the community uses is how many wallets, how many unique holders of these 10,000 punks are there. So just like any other crypto project, like any collectible, there's obviously be whales, there's be a large concentration towards the top few wallets. And basically how you how you got these in back in June, all you had to do was click the one you wanted, pay the transaction fee, boom, you got it. So if you knew, and there was no MetaMask back then, so if you were you know tech savvy a, a little bit enough to to be able to pump these out, which there, there's still a couple people active in the community who, who claimed a couple hundred of these, and now they're enjoying the profits from that. But as you can see, there's only currently 20 wallets that have 100. So when I joined this, I, I found that I was in NFT, NFTs for over two years before I even kind of heard about this for real. And last May of 2020 was when the last time there was a big spike in volume and a lot of interest. And that's when I finally took it seriously. It's actually interesting to see that 458 wallets have two or more. So when I joined in May, there was about 800 unique wallets. And as of September, middle of September 2020, we just um, hit 919. So this is one of the best ways to kind of see how things are going. To obviously want to decentralize, quote unquote, you know, some of these top holders into new users. And one thing is that we just there's no real way to gauge how many of of these 10,000 punks are lost. One thing you have is they have this last active. So project came out three years ago so are these are these guys do these guys claim them they lost their wallet they don't care about crypto or they're not on this earth anymore we don't know you can kind of take a deeper dive so you click into a wallet this is what the page looks like there's a lot of different metrics on here punks owns how many people bid on punks their own how many you bid how much the total amount people spend so this guy claimed all 703 didn't spend any money the kind of estimated value of punks on this is pretty off, but I mean, it's, when you have this many to see number like this, is awesome. But like I said, last active three years ago, so you want to you can click into their wallet to see an ether scan. So let's look at this guy. The last transaction he made was 672 days ago. So is he still around? Does he know he has crypto punks? Is this guy still going? We don't know. In my opinion, I want to say there's probably about 2,000 lost, but that's just based on just being involved in the community for you know the past couple of months. Now we'll look into um, the marketplace. So this is a punks for page, punks for sale page, where let me refresh this because there's a lot of changes going on. Okay, where it lists all the punks that are currently for sale from the lowest price to the highest price. So one of the terms you're going to be hearing over and over as you get involved in this community are floor punks. And floor punks are basically the cheap. Punks that are that don't have the rarer attributes. So, as a week ago, the lowest was about 0.7 F. And this, like any other type of project, these are these really fluctuated up until this point um, with the price of USD. So, I mean, the price of F in USD. So, as F started shooting up in USD, you would see people start listing their punks for lower and lower. But now. Um, we're kind of starting to see, as USD is going up, the you know people are having stronger hands and they're staying more stable. So, as of this morning, there's been about 70 sales today. This is like this only happens like twice a year so far in history that there's crazy days. Um, someone made a contract that you can wrap these as as ERC 721s, and that can be bought and sold on sites like OpenSea and Rarible. So that kind of kicked off. Maybe it's a bull run. It's only been two hours, and that kind of prompted me to really you know, get my ass moving to make this video. That, the, the, that about sixty punks, all below this price, were bought up today. So, and that's a lot. This is this is a very illiquid market, and that is a lot of of volume. Not in terms of F necessarily, but in terms of individual punks sold. So you can kind of even just see if you don't even know what I'm really talking about. Looking that you know some of these plainer looking. I'll get into the traits next, but. As you start scrolling down to the more expensive ones, you'll start seeing more crazy and crazier 
traits standing out. Got VR goggles, vapes, you know, crazy, more crazy hair, clown hair, blonde hair, white hair, hoodies, um, these little tassel hats, you know, bigger and, and cooler beards, clown eyes. There's, there's police caps, 3D goggles, medical masks. Um, there's silver and gold chains, and these are all valued mostly on the rarity, but obviously it comes to a point of what's a user preference. So we're already down to 10F here. I've got Tiara. So now I will show you what the, uh, the attribute page looks like. So this is your CryptoPunk Bible. I believe there's about 92 different attributes on this page, give or take. I probably counted wrong. And how this just is the name of the attribute, how many it's listed in order of rarity. So from lowest to highest, the number that has this attribute, how many are currently available for sale, what that lowest price is, and then this average sale is you just ignore this because this is averaging in like the dollar, two dollar sales that took place three years ago in the very beginning. These are worth a way, this is worth at least 10 times this average sale value for an alien. So when punks were um, first generated. It could be a male or female, or an alien, an ape, or a zombie. And how everything worked out is that it was about a 65-35 male to female split. So females are are rarer, are rarer, and they they command usually about a 20% premium for the same punk over males. In my experience, sorry if that's not correct to those, these passionate community members. But the alien, the apes, and the zombies. These are the big three. These are the rarest and these typically command the biggest the biggest prices and are the most coveted there's only nine aliens let's click into this guy to show you what he looks like I'll open up there hasn't been a, an alien sale in a while zombies are now kind of what's moving so here's an ape there's only 24 apes not male not female which is an ape so you can see, someone claimed it, people are bidding, bidding, bidding. Someone bid 50F this morning. Someone bid 50, 50F, hoping maybe this, maybe it'll wake someone up. Maybe someone owns it, maybe they know who owns it, maybe he doesn't, but maybe, maybe. Someone's willing to pay $20,000 for this with the zombies. The zombies are, you know, it's the most of the, of the big three. So these have been moving. There's been a couple sales lately for about 30 to 35F. Some guy actually who lost his wallet in 2017, recovered it last week, had a zombie, um, exciting. So zombies are definitely of the three. This is by far the most liquid. And then you have nine aliens. This is like the holy grail. I don't think an alien has sold in a really long time. Two years ago was the most recent sale. There were a bunch of uh, ape sales in in May at the peak. I don't think there's been one since. So then scrolling through, um, in my experience, all the traits that are about a hundred or hundred and fifty and less are valued a lot higher than even things, let's say, in like 300 plus. So these things like beanie, choker, pilot helms, tiaras, iron side, buck teeth, these are like command a much higher premium than even things a couple spaces down. Once you start getting below like the top hat, the value starts really dropping a lot in terms of what people have been valuing these at. And I just thought this was so cool when I first found this. I'm like, there's so many attributes and there's so many potential combinations, but at the end of the day, there's only 10,000 of them. So you kind of want to, at least in my, I'm not a rich person, I'm not a whale by any means, so I was like, okay, I wanted to find one that I, my preference that was in my price range. That's how I kind of started with this, and then I kind of learned more about how the different attributes are valued, and I took it from there to kind of start buying other ones, because the, the, the line you're gonna hear, which is so true, once you you think you're gonna wanna buy one CryptoPunk, and then you buy it, and then you, you're just itching to buy more and more and more. And next thing you know, you have like 10 of them. So I was quickly scrolling through. So I said, less, obviously less than 100s are valuable. So one just sold for 44F. I'll show that after. It had a choker and a pilot helmet. Two very rare traits on one punk. Sold for 44F. We have pigtails are also rare ones sold for like 10 or 20 recently. Quickly scrolling through, you have all different hair types. You have the blondes are, I believe, the rarest color. You see a lot of them, just different styles. But the blondes are kind of towards the top. 
you know, the wild, people like the wild hair and the white hair is the, um, the most valuable. Cowboy hats are just cool. People like that. The mohawks, different color mohawks, vampire hair, shaved hair, clown hair, um, straight hair, different, um, colors, medical mask, predicted corona, different chains. Then you get fedora, tassels. There's just so many. Hoodies. Hoodies are obviously, hoodies are awesome. Different eyeshadows, vapes. When I first, I was just thought it was so funny that they have like cigarettes, um, vape, and a pipe. You see this color right here. I spoke. Of, I thought it was so funny that they like had a, had vape in here. You can have a cigarette and a pipe, but it's like a vape. Like, that was that was genius. Three D glasses are cool. My personal favorite. We're about to get some goat. You know, a do rag. You know, pair, I love uh, VR. I think VR is just cool. It's kind of like an almost like an like an eighties goggles vibe uh, I like the vape I like the smoking devices but and then as you start getting down here it starts getting more towards user preferences so you see like the crazy hair is 414 and these are these are pretty ex expensive comparative to some of the lower ones like three at there's 414 the lowest one is currently three and then you can go up to you see less than 300 in their their floor value you can get a mustache for 140. You can get an eye mask, you know, it doesn't have to be necessarily a hair, it could be like a, a VR or a pipe, and they're cheaper. So once you get down here, it starts going more towards the user preference, and obviously what you think is awesome and cool, so what I think is ugly and disgusting, and vice versa. Quickly scrolling through just to kind of show you the last, so you have the male and female. So like I said, there's a lot more uh, males and females, just how the algorithm landed. So now... Um, that explain this. I'm look take a look at some of the top sales and kind of maybe that help you understand why these commanded the values that they did. So first, before I forget, there's a very important picture to show you. This is the number of crypto punks on the right side and the number of traits. So how many crypto punks have that number of traits? So a punk could have zero through seven, and it's a bell curve. So there's only eight, there's eight crypto punks that have zero traits. There's one that has 333, and then as you start getting higher and higher, you see it drop back down. Only 11 have six, and only one has seven. Only one punk has seven different traits. Um, from my experience, especially when I was first starting out, I, I, a lot of the floor punks are in the two to three range. So I was like, is four more valuable than two or three? It, as of right now, it really the two, three, or fours. It doesn't matter if one is four. That comes down to preference. Maybe in the future, that might you know, a four might command a higher premium. But as of now, it's it's really not like that. It's zero, one, and then like the five, six, sevens are um, the big ones. So looking at the top sales, so you see the first five all took place in May. So why was this a hundred Ethereum twenty thousand at the time, which is in this is closer to forty thousand now. So one other thing, it's not spelled out in the attributes, it's a different skin tones, you probably saw it on the other page, with albino being the rarest. So this is a female albino with zero traits. The most expensive punk in terms of Ethereum ever sold, probably USD as well. And what's crazy about this one is that, so because this is an old smart contract, when you sell a punk or when you withdraw a bid, the Ethereum is in the smart contract and you have to um, perform a transaction to withdraw it to your wallet. And the person that sold this, they, they claimed it, they put it up for sale 100 F two days later, and they probably, who knows what happens to them. When you look at an Ether scan, they never withdrew the 100 F from the contract. Their last transaction was a really long time ago. So this person might not even know that they sold a CryptoPunk for 100 F, or they lost their wallet and they're just forever going to be crying that they have 100 F stuck in the ether. But that's also just a crazy, craziness of this. Like some some rich person just freed, freed up this CryptoPunk from jail. And now it's out in the, in the wild as the most um, expensive sale to date. And then number two, this is a seven trader. This is, I guess, this, I guess in my opinion, is probably the most valuable, maybe besides like someone trying to get an alien, as those haven't been sold in a while. So the only one with seven different traits, and you know some pretty some pretty rare ones: buck teeth, top hat, you know the big beard, 
see the little bucktooth pixel, the mole pixel, the earring pixel, classic shades to go with the beard. You know, this is just a great looking punk and one of the rarest. So this is bought for, I believe this is a couple of top sales. So in 2019, it sold for 26, which at the time I believe was huge, before my time. And then 85F, I mean, compared to the other one that I just showed you, this, this almost looks like a great buy. I mean, this is worth at least double, if not more at this point. Then you have the ape, and then you start seeing the apes, the zombies. This one stuck out to me. I think just it's the beanie is the rarest, but I guess someone just really wanted this at the time. You know, and this was like in the middle of that like May quote unquote bull run. This was the one I was talking about. It's a choke. This just happened last week. 44F pilot helmet choker, and she's a looker. So this is a great page to browse. Then you start seeing more apes. Um, this is an interesting one, the number one. I believe the devs sold this early on. And then obviously, as of right now, the numbers, people don't really seem to really care too much about numbers unless it's like something crazy like this. I think in the future they will. Like for example, punk number like 2222, 3333. Like I think in the future, as a lot of people hopefully come to this, that that's gonna start Demanding higher premiums because there's only so much you can kind of do. So here you start seeing more zero traders. See here is the same guys as here. So it was a 14 sale, then it became the second highest. The number zero, Dev Punk, wow. 2018. So this is a huge at the time. And then you start seeing more zero traders. Orange side here. Here's the alien. I mean, this is. An alien has been so. This is the last alien sale over two years ago. Like this, this is worth at least ten times this right now. So, uh, I hope that helps everyone understand kind of how, why these things are going for what they are, how these things are valued. So the top sixty sales here. I'm trying to make sure I don't know, leaving anything else out that I wanted to include in this video for everyone. Um. Some things to keep in mind, it's a very illiquid market. Um, if you don't have a lot of free F, or if you're not willing to have um, your F be locked up for a little, for an extended period of time, I don't know if this is really for you. As you can see, for example, the top hat, of the 24 most recent top hat sales, it's most of them took place you know, years ago, six plus months. In the past you know, six months, there's only been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sales. And you know, this is how it is for a lot of different trades. So it's not exactly, there are flip opportunities. Someone actually flipped one for a couple F the other day. It was like a clown looking one. But for the most part, um, this is kind of like a longer term vision for, for most people. Obviously the people that are, su that are successful in flipping, but you gotta kind of really know what you're doing. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, so a good way to kind of search for things. So let's say you wanna find someone Let's say you you want you know you want a punk with a top hat and a vape. So you put it in quotes, top hat, space, quote, vape. And then so there's only two punks out of 10,000 that have a top hat and a vape. So that's just a one way for um, you know, discovery if you want to try to see a punk that exists um, with your with the attributes you, that you desire. Um, I believe that is everything I wanted to touch on for this. So today it's been crazy. There's been like 70 sales or something like ludicrous that never happens. There's only, you can go like days or, or a week at a time without a single sale. And now that there a way was created to kind of ter to wrap these as 721s and be listed on all these other marketplaces. And, you know, art has really taken off in the past, you know, two or so weeks, more like more than I've ever imagined, faster than I ever imagined. And these are the OGs. This was the first art, the first collectibles. People are always into that stuff. And it's just fun. Like, there it, it, it might not be a lot of utility compared to other projects like uh, Metaverse, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, a real art person at all. I never really saw the value, you know, back, back then. I'm like, oh, I don't really want to spend money on to get, like, a piece of art on the blockchain. But, like, this is, like, a whole different ballgame, in my opinion. And... The value of these have only gone up over the past three years. And I just think biggest piece of advice for everyone is be, you got to be patient with these in terms of buying and selling. I'm sure this 
bull market might cool off, it might keep going, but if you want to try to flip, again, you got to kind of be patient. You know, I think of this as a longer term vision. I buy a thing for an F and I'm like, I'm going to hold on to it until it's worth three, four, five F. You know, even that's a couple years out, I'm, I'm comfortable, you know, sitting on that. So I hope this has been helpful. I try to include as much as I can um, in terms of like marketplace, why, you know, why things are valued the way they are and why you might start seeing things really start popping off again. And... If you have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out to me, Twitter, Discord, whatever. And uh, thank you if you made it this far through the video. Thank you for watching. And I hope to start talking on other NFT projects, not just Top Shot and, and your CryptoPunks in the future. So thank you, everybody, for watching and have a great day.